Hey guys, this is Neil with Catalyst Machine Works, and this is the frame assembly video for our Slam Nasty. This video is going to apply to not only the 5 inch version of the frame, which I have here on the bench, but also the 4 inch and the 3 inch version. Now, the reason for that is the design of all of these sizes is the same. Uh, these are just scaled down versions. So the same processes that we use here are gonna apply here. So just wanted to point that out. Now, let's go ahead and see what's gonna come in your kit. Take it out of the bag here. All right, so we've got the bottom plate. We've got the top plate. All right, the Velcro strap. Okay. It's gonna come with four arms, obviously. This is the front cross brace, and we've got some M3 press nuts already installed for you. This is the rear cross brace. Same thing, four press nuts installed. These are your camera mount parts. Little TPU pieces of plastic. And then all the various fasteners. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the <clears throat> fastener bag and dump it in a bowl. And the first step is to go ahead and install the standoffs onto the front and rear cross brace. Now I've got the Super Slam Nasty, meaning that it uses these little 13 millimeter tall standoffs. And so what happens here is when you install these standoffs, it results in about a 20 and a half millimeter available stack height that you have to work with here. So, there's also another version of this frame that uses 19 millimeter standoffs so that you can get more available space in here. When you use the 19 millimeter standoffs, it's about 26 and a half millimeter of available height, if I'm not mistaken. Now, um, if you have the Super Slam Nasty, you can see that it is super duper slammed. <laughs> so you really have to Take that into consideration when you're putting your stack in here. Make sure that you've got room. Now, one consideration with this machine in the Super Slam version is if you are racing and you hit, let's say, a steel conduit gate and it hits it right here, that can flex this top plate and then contact your electronics. So if you want a little bit of insurance uh, with regards to that, make sure you've got room in here. or maybe cheat a little bit and go ahead and put some spacers or something uh, on these standoffs to move your top plate up a bit. So that's up to you, that's at your discretion and how you want to do that. But, oh, one last thing that I want to mention before we really get going here is that this is the frame assembly. All right, It's not a full build, I'm not going to go through and install all the electronics, it's just the frame assembly alone. So the uh, order in which I assemble these parts obviously might be a bit different once you start installing your electronics, but this is a very simple frame, okay? Uh, obviously, there's just not a lot of components to it. It's, it's simplistic, so a lot of this is self-explanatory on how this thing goes together, um, but I'm going to go ahead and make this video for you guys that might need a little bit of help. Uh, oh, and there are some very important aspects of putting this thing together that I need to point out. So that's another reason I'm making this video is there's some don't you knows that you may not know, uh, but now you're going to know. Okay, so here we go. Go ahead and get these standoffs here. All right, we'll move all these other parts out of the way. Okay, so you're going to want to go ahead and get the screws that attach these to those plates. They are M3 by 
eight millimeter button head steel screws. So we're gonna get these. Now make sure that you run the, uh, the standoffs on the same side as these nuts. Take a two millimeter driver and crank these down a bit. Now, when you try and crank on this and tighten these up, it may start to spin this uh, this standoff. But don't worry about that. Just get it nice as tight as you can, and then once you go back and start putting in this screw, you'll be able to tighten it all the way. You can go back underneath and finish tighten these screws. There we go, that's all you need. We're going to take the bottom plate and then install the rear cross brace and the rear arms onto the bottom plate. So to do that, you're going to need four screws. There are these little steel flathead screws. All right, so I'm going to grab four of those. Now, okay, this is a really important part of the video that I want to point out, all right? These screws are very high-end screws, okay? This is basically about the best screw you're ever going to find in a flathead steel screw, unless you go get something like titanium and spend 10 times the amount, <laughs> right? These are as good as it gets. Now, with that said, if you take a dull driver, okay? You take a driver that isn't sharp, a, 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 a low quality driver, maybe one of those old school Allen wrenches that are, you know, look like an actual Allen wrench, you're possibly going to strip this out. All right, that's just the nature of these screws. So you need to use a good driver. And also, you don't need to take Hulk force <laughs> and torque this thing down. All right. Use, a, use a, 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 a logical amount of torque onto this thing. This is not, these machines are not a 1967, you know, Chevrolet Corvette with massive bolts. It's a tiny drone. So you need to reduce the amount of torque that goes into this thing. All right, so use something sensible. All right, so let's go ahead and get to work. So this is going to go like so, all right, run this in here, position this and go ahead and torque it in, there we go, we'll move on to the next one. So if you've got an old crappy pair of uh, set of drivers, hey man, maybe this is your chance to go ahead and get something decent. There we go. So watch this. what it should sound like. There we have it. All right, so we'll move on to the front. Before I install the front components to this base here, I want to mention another thing that we found out. Uh, after extended testing, we found that these screws, over time and repeated crashes and vibrations and everything that goes along with racing drones, 
these screws can start to slightly unscrew. They can back out, okay? Um, it doesn't happen all the time. It depends on how you abuse it, <laughs> uh, but it can happen. So if you want to make absolutely sure that that doesn't happen, and uh, you know that's something that's going to bother you, you can use blue Loctite. Just take a little bit of, a little bit of Loctite right here on the end, just a touch, when you run these things in, and that problem is gone. All right, so I just wanted to mention that to you guys. Uh, you may be saying to yourself right now, well, why the hell did he use these type of screws? Well, the reason we use these type of screws is this right here. It's completely flat. If you have ever had a crash and the battery was catapulted into another type of screw, maybe a socket head screw or a button head screw, you know why we use these. <laughs> because batteries are expensive. And it happens very frequently with machines with FPV racers that have, uh, you know, the other type of head on the screw. So it's totally worth it. That little bit of issue here where you may have these things backing out after repeated crashes, uh, in my opinion and in all my pilots' opinions, this is the way to go. So that's why we did it. So let's go ahead and start. What we'll do is put these in, and obviously this is going to be the same situation we had with the, oops, we might actually need the arm, that'll help, with the rear. I'm just going to do it again on the front. go. Since I've got the bottom plate exposed, I think this is a good time to discuss the nylon components that come with the kit. So these are pretty standard components and what they are is we've got four nylon male-female standoffs. These are M3 standoffs. These are six millimeter long We've got four M3 Phillips head screws here. They are 12 millimeter long. We've got eight of these little black spacers or washers or however you want to call them. All right, and then we've got eight, I'm sorry, we've got four of these nylon nuts. And so how this works, I'm just going to show you what it looks like on a completed build. This is a build with a full size stack, obviously. So you run the screw in. You've got two of the washers per corner. You put your ESC on there. You've got the standoffs. You put the flight controller and then the nuts. Okay. Now, a lot of these stacks are coming with their own uh, fasteners and whatnot to attach it. So you can decide whether you want to use that or not. Um, this is a example of a Slam Nasty, Super Slam Nasty with the micro stack. So obviously we have used the same components here with this micro stack. But some micro stacks come with their own hardware, which is usually M2. And so you can use that if you want, up to you. Okay, so for the purposes of this video, um, I'm not going to install the, the hardware here. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the camera mount. So here they are here, and these are very simple. All right, you may have uh, you may have some little tiny hairs. I call them hairs. <laughs> it's kind of residual. Uh, I don't know plastic uh, retraction plastic from the pre printing process. 
Um, we try and remove as much of that as we can through heat, but you may still have a little bit. So you can take a heat gun and just run over these things and that stuff will just basically melt away almost instantly. So how this works is you put these things over these standoffs and press them down like that. They are a compression fit. Make sure that these little nubs are obviously going, you know, this direction and that direction, and they're not on the same side. Okay. Then you're going to take your camera and install it with these two screws here. All right. So these are M2 by six millimeter socket head screws. And you can see that I've got it installed there. So that's how you're going to install your camera. Now, you're probably wondering, what in the world is this? <laughs> what you, I've built some drones before, and I've never seen this. What the hell is Catalyst Machinery doing? They've lost their mind! No. Well, yes, we have lost our mind. But there's a reason that they're there. And this is what they're for. So I went ahead and installed this camera onto these mounts here. I've got the screws in. So what we've noticed uh, during testing is that at certain throttle ranges, and typically it's at the high end of the throttle. So if you're a racer, you may not actually notice this, but if you get this thing out in an open field and you really crank on it, um, vibrations from the motors are induced into the frame travels to this camera and ever so slightly this can vibrate and you'll pick it up in your DV in your in your in your goggle feed okay so what we've done is we've put these little holes here and what you can do is take these two screws that come with the kit these are sheet metal screws they're number two they're seven sixteenths inch long and you can run them. Let's go ahead and switch this around. You can run them into these holes. Like this. Alright, and so what you want to do, once you've got your camera height, oops, once you've got your camera height lined up and you know where your camera mount parts are going to be sitting, look at the distance from the top of the standoff. Okay, get the light on this thing. There we go. So the distance from the top of the standoff to the top of the mount, and then you want to make sure that your screw distance here, from here to the very top of the head of the screw, is just a little bit farther. So we're going to come down and move this a little bit more like that. There we go. And then we'll run it on the other side. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Big hands and tiny screws, man. <laughs> they don't go well together. There we go. I got it. So we're going to run this in here. Make sure that this one is about the same distance. Okay. So how this works, when you put the top plate on, all right, and you watch what happens here, okay, the top plate pushes on those screws. It then pushes on the, on the camera mounts. And what that's doing is it's completely isolating this camera mount from vibration. All right, so what I suggest you to do is you may not need these. Some people don't notice it, or some people don't have vibrations, and other people do. So it's just kind of up in the air what's gonna happen. Um, you could try it without these. And then if you have some problems, you notice some vibrations in the camera, put them in and use this method. And that will go away. So that's an optional little accessory that we include, a 
in this, in this kit for you if you'd like to use it. As I mentioned, this is a really simple frame, so we're, we're to the end here. Um, go ahead and put the top plate on. I went ahead and left the camera in there. Right, we've got some button head screws. These are the same button head screws that are used on the bottom. And install this. Now once you've tightened those down, you can go back to the bottom. And tighten these guys all the way. Right, so a little trick that uh, one of my team pilots pointed out, makes a lot of sense, is you might consider putting some blue Loctite on these screws here on the bottom. Uh, the reason being is that when you're out in the field and you want to take this top plate off for some reason, um, if you've got blue Loctite on there, it's going to hold those bottom screws, and then when you take this screw off, the standoff isn't going to spin. So that's something to think about. All right, so another thing I want to point out is that in the kit we also include some motor screws. So they are, here's an example of one here. They are M3 by 8 millimeter long, and you could receive a black steel button head like this, or it could be a silver socket head or a black socket head. It just depends on what we have in stock at the time. Um, and obviously, the way that they work is they run through here and mount your motors. Now, there's only three screws per motor, so you're going to have 12 screws total. Now, uh, you can opt to install a front brace, and if you're going to do that, you're going to increase your structural uh, soundness and your crash toughness quite a bit by doing that. They don't come in the kit, but we do offer them as optional. Here is an example of a machine with one installed. So if you purchase the braces from us, you're going to need the screws. You have to purchase those separate as well, and they are M3 by 12 millimeter. They are listed on our site. You can actually find a link to them right on the page for the front and the rear brace. The front and the rear brace are different because there are different angles that the arms come out. So you can't use the front on the rear and you can't use the rear on the front. All right, so there's that. Okay, that brings a close to this build video. Um, if you have any questions, please let us know. You can email us at support at catalystmachineworks.com or info at catalystmachineworks.com. Uh, the last bit that I will point out is that I've got some other accessories and things that I'm working on right now, uh, like a session mount for this thing um, and some other tricks up my sleeve. So once those are ready, I'll post them on the website.